Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You join us here at Serious Fishing uh, in their little fly tan booth that they've created just for me by the look of it. Um, it's already very busy here. I'm looking out at a number of boys who are all watching in to see what's what. So uh, I've actually started this fly. Uh, what I'm doing here is uh, patterned by a well-known man from Montana in the USA called Kelly Gallup. And this is Kelly's Cripple. Uh, Kelly's Cripple is a modular fly uh, designed for the upwing species of flies. And there are a number of sort of design uh, sort of specialities in it. Uh, I don't know whether you can see there, but I've actually put a couple of bends into the hook. That's quite important um, because uh, according to Kelly in his book, 75% uh, of the spinners uh, that lie on the surface of the water don't lie in the crucifix shape. They lie with a, a, a curve in their body to stabilize themselves and generally only one wing as opposed to the two. So that's sort of you know what we're doing here. Uh, I've already put a split tail in with microfibits and olive and I've got olive thread and I've got the thread body in. So I'm just gonna build a little underbody taper here and then we'll actually dub the body and go from there. So just a wee bit of a taper, nothing too much. So we're going for super fine dubbing here. <clears throat> and we'll just get that on. Nice and thin, not too much dubbing. Common mistake, too much dubbing. And that's about as much as I would want for a 16. So I'm actually going to dub this maybe in a more unusual way and that I'm going to work back to the bend and there's a reason for that which you'll see in just a second now that's not good because I caught the point of the hook I don't want to be doing that that's easy to rectify it okay so that dubbing should just about reach the bend of the hook and then with this thread I'm actually waiting back up through the dubbing which helps gives a wee bit of segmentation, but more importantly for me, binds the dubbing down. So that's a wee bit against a lot of fly tan convention. So the next thing is we're going to put in a hackle. And for this, because the hackle is actually going to be trimmed, we need a hackle bigger than you would normally use for this size of a hook. So this is a size 16. So I'm looking for a hackle that is would normally fit a size 14 or maybe even a size 12 hook. So I'm going for an olive grizzle from Whiting here. And you tend to need a bigger hackle than what you think you need. Um, and it's one of those occasions when a big hackle on a small hook really works. Which hopefully you'll see by the time I demonstrate it. So just removing all of the rubbish away here. And a wee bit on the inside. So that the hackle will lie right for me. Okay, a bit of wax in the thread for grip. And in goes the haggle. So I'm just sort of, yeah, looking at that and think, yeah, yeah. Slightly big, which is exactly what we want. Trimming off the stem. We're then going for the wing. And the wing on this fly, as I said earlier, is actually going to come out one side, okay, because it's going to lie flat on the surface, out one side, almost as if the fly is blown over. Um, so I'm using a product called Sparkle Emerger yarn for this. This is actually like a very light tan, but it's all, it's more of a sort of grey tan, and I either use this tan, which my good friend Bram Malloy gave to me, or the uh, grey, so either or, it doesn't seem to matter in the effectiveness of the pattern. This is a wee bit easier seen. <clears throat> so, secret here is just sort of picking out the right amount. And because we're going to double this over, uh, you just need to be careful that you don't either underdo it or overdo it. Because the wing's quite important in the flotation of the fly. So that's about right for a 16. Okay. Um, okay, snip off and just sort of roll that up. Okay, so in putting this in, 
we just pull it round the back of the thread, okay, and join it up on this side. And then you're just going to set it in really tight to that hackle. And you want a bit of tension on your thread there to lock this in. Okay, and then just back in there and wrapping back in a little bit to the wing. I don't know if you can see that, so it's sort of sitting out the side there. Okay, two bits. So now we're just going to dub the thorax, and we want the thorax a wee bit thicker than the body. And I'm just picking the same dubbing here. You could blend a little bit of darker material into the thorax, but we'll not bother doing that just in a moment. So on we go, nice and thin. The tighter the dubbing is wrapped, the tighter that the dubbing is spun onto the thread, the less the water will penetrate your fly and the longer it'll float. So that's the idea of tight dub and also obviously for neatness that will do for now so i'm just going to come up in not quite behind the eye one and even enough for a head there and build the thorax and i'll come in i don't know if you can see that sort of backed right in to where that junction is okay and i'm going to come in behind the wing and behind the hackle and pull the hackle forward out of the road okay right in behind so how I normally check whether this is right or not is I want to look on the underside very often as tires you, you just get the one view you're looking down on it but that's not what the trout sees so it's important to have a look and think yeah that looks good so I'm just bringing the thread forward and waiting through that dubbing and because I'm using a nano thread here the nano thread just sort of binds right down into the dubbing and looking at that I could probably afford a wee touch more dubbing than that but in fact I was going to try it with that but we'll not we'll put just a wee tad more dubbing on just to thicken up that thorax just a wee bit thin on it for my leg and <clears throat> we're splitting her sir it's not the end of the world that's better okay so there we go, now just to wind on the haggle, oh, take my haggle pliers, could do it with these whitings with your fingers, but I like to go to the haggle pliers. <clears throat> okay, and so holding this wing sort of back out of the road, you're getting a turn of the haggle right in behind the wing. Okay, good turn right in behind the wing. Okay, and that's sort of pushing the wing forward a wee bit, and then two or three in front of the wing. There's one. And a rotary hackle plier is a useful job for this. It's three. Okay, let's push that up a little bit. And down. So, the way I could do is just pull all those hackle fibers back, come in underneath, and just bind that hackle in. And again, with these nano threads, you can put in a small head but plenty of turns <clears throat> and I like plenty of turns so there's the hackle lying there still another fly knot hackle so we'll just come in with a fine nose pair of scissors and lap that off okay and we'll finish the head pulling all those wee boys back out of the road So I've got in for two whip finishes there, just for security. And with nano threads, I like to ping them off with a scalpel blade since they're cheaper than a good pair of scissors. So then I'm just going to pull this haggle forward. Right round. 
Just pull it forward that it's sort of sitting right. <clears throat> okay, and then we come to there's a, a wee fibre pack on it. There's a mine, so we'll get in with the tweezers to get him out. <clears throat> it's just in there. He's not sitting right, so I think it's not sitting right, just get it out. So, we have the wing coming out the side. Obviously, we don't want a wing that length, that makes sense. So, what we want here in the wing is the shortest fibres to align along the body. Okay, so the wing's going to come back like this, okay. Um, not tight along the body. It's not out at 90 degrees either, because we have this wee curve. It's actually coming back at an angle, so we need to just trim it. So... Okay, the first trim I'm going to make is actually level with the length of the body on this wing. Okay, so I'm coming here and I'm lining it up with the back of the body. Just about there. Okay, so you can see that looks sort of quite a drastic thing. Okay, so we need to obviously trim this round. So the next cut then is across here. Okay, and now we're just starting to curve that wing a wee bit and make it more like a mayfly shape okay it's a wee bit long still a wee bit of fussy trimming and i would say that's not far off being right there a wee bit more okay you have to be careful you don't nip off your tails here done that before which is a disaster for you when you spent your time putting them in. So then we have this haggle, which is oversized and long if you look at it here. But that's by design because we're going to clip this bottom stuff off. Because we want this fly to sit bang, flush in the film. Okay, and your flotation bit is by uh, getting your floating on this wing. That's a good uh, uh, buoyant material. But when you get your, your floating on there... That's where you're getting your main flotation properties. So it's not really from the hackle. Your hackle's going to sort of stabilise the land of the fly, as well as these wee sort of outriggers of tails. Okay, that stops it penetrating uh, the surface film of the water. So you want your tails, if always are slightly long in tails as opposed to slightly short. If they're short, that penetrates the water and you don't want that. So trimming just to finish, apart from a bit of varnish. So we're going to turn it over. Have we look? Okay, and we're just going to cut right into this. And you want, as opposed to like a wee chop, 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 you want to go right across this and go bang. And look, say, all right, how's that looking? Okay, and how you know that you've got it right is when you put it on your finger, and if you can see that, that the thing just sits flat. And that's what you're looking for. So you've got those wee outriggers at the back. I don't know if you can see that or not. I can't see what I'm doing here. Uh, your wing out the side. Your hackle to sort of stabilise it on this side. And the hackle up here on the top of the fly, you could actually trim that out. But as you get older, you need things like that to see when you're fishing the fly. So that really helps you see the fly. So a wee bit of varnish on the head. And uh, again, personally I don't find that ultra important in dry flies. If you do two or three whip finishes with a fine nano thread, I think you tend not to need the varnish. So, But anyway, you're more likely to lose the fly up a tree than you are to need the varnish, to be honest with you. So there you go. Uh, Kelly Gallop's Cripple. It's a modular fly. That, in a size 16, you know, will represent... A number of the the olives you can just adjust the shade adjust the size uh, just a color of hackle I just go from sort of you know lights and darks uh, I do a bit of a gray one I do a wee sort of a yellow one uh, I have friends that tie their mayflies for the locks uh, using that uh, principle and I have done really well with it so just it's just a good one to have. You can adjust, as I say, the colours, adjust the sizes, 